Podcast World videos. Well, today we're going to be talking about all the big mistakes that people make when they move to Spain or come into Spain on holiday and also some tips. So make sure you watch the video to the end and you're going to see all this amazing information you must know if you're coming out of Spain and it could help you save a few quid as well. But in the meantime, we're in a fabulous place here, Caluesa de Segura, which is just off the AP7 733 junction. And that is half an hour away from Murphia Airport and also half an hour away from Anacante. So if you did want to come down, visit this typically Spanish town. It is very, very rustic and a lot of history. And we're, going we're going to go around this town, this beautiful place we mentioned before, and we're going to show you all the magnificent places and the great views and the famous St. Rocky Church, which is overlooking the old town. So make sure you watch it right to the end. And also we're going to tell you all about these mistakes. And a lot of mistakes are quite easy to resolve for yourself. They're not difficult. A lot of them common knowledge but they're very important lessons to be learned and also some tips. So yeah, follow me journey around Cali Oesa de Segura. And we're gonna take a look around and we're gonna talk about all the mistakes people make when they come to so Spain. That is one of the mistakes people do when they do come on holiday and they do visit these Spanish towns. Not particularly this area, but if you're up in Barcelona and then you wanna go and visit the famous Sagrada Familia and the other famous tourist spots. You've got the Picasso Museum which is another popular tourist place in Barcelona. Also, you've got the, um, the Park of Guel. So these, these are really popular places where all tourists go in Spain and people just turn up there and automatically think you can just buy a ticket. Well, these tickets are booked well days in advance and if you turn up, you'll see a ball outside telling you uh, the place is full. They only allocate so many tickets. So you need to book well before you go to these famous uh, tourist spots to visit you've got to remember when you come and visit these tourist spots that they've got no fiestas going on and it's not like uh, big parades or anything because if you do your hotels are going to be double the price what they normally are because they're going to be full so that's another tip you need to concentrate on when you book your holiday check with the hotels what's um, going on in the area and your hotel price is going to skyrocket this is Holy Week coming up now in Easter. Semana Santa and you've got untold fiestas and parades going on all over nearly every town and village you've got these fiestas. So you're gonna have a lot, a lot of uh, people going to these areas and visit. So I should imagine this time of year is not a very good time to book an hotel. If you're just gonna come and have a look around and have a little holiday, you can come another time and find it a lot, lot cheaper. Also another tip, when you do go to these tourist places, you know, even though Spain, like I mentioned a lot of times, that is one of the safest crime rates in Europe, but the main number one topic is uh, hugger muggers. And uh, they will come up to you and just ask for direction, basically, pretending they need to know where to go. And then they will just come and greet you with a cuddle of thank you very much. And then five minutes later, you'll realise that you, your necklace is gone or your watch, because they're special at it, known all over Spain, and they move on from town to town. So, so the actual it. name of this magnificent church here, it's uh, Inglesia de San Martin, and it's right next to the town hall as well. And it's in the old part of the town, and uh, it's got uh, bits of gold done uh, in the chapel by Miguel de Vieira. And if you did want to check it out, it's, a, it's Plaza de España, which is the name of most uh, church squares in Spain and in all these towns and villages. Absolutely amazing. And we're going to have a look inside and check it out. So that was superb, unbelievable, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We're going to carry on walking around this amazing little place. I mean, the population here is 18,000 people, so it's not a very big town. Like I mentioned, it's typically Spanish. You can get four bedroom, three bedroom house here for 89,000 euros, believe it or not. So there are bargains to be had. I've even seen um, apartments here 
three bedroom, two bathroom for 52,000 euros. Absolutely picturesque. And we're gonna show you all around here and we're gonna be talking about everything you need to know about Spain. I mean, a lot of people that come to Spain on holiday, they go to the main tourist square and they're thinking they're gonna get a real good bargain. Actually, they're the worst places to be going if you're going for dinner because typically the Spanish eat at nine o'clock at night and uh, they just have a light lunch and the main, main meal is uh, after nine o'clock. That's when you're gonna get your fresh food and you have gotta go to the back streets because if you start going to the main tourist areas, you're gonna be ripped off with frozen food, basically. So when you see a paella advertised on uh, the, these tourist restaurant boards, it's actually paella d'or, which is actually a frozen paella. It tastes nothing like um, a real paella and it's not, not a bit, any kind of taste at all. It's actually quite disgusting. And uh, another tip as well, always go for um, a menu of the day. And when you go to these uh, restaurants just off the tourist spots, you'll get great value for money. You'll find it's at least 40% cheaper than the normal tourist spots. And uh, typically in Spanish as well, you think they drink sangria, actually out here, Cinto Barino, that is the main drink they drink here, which is a bit similar to sangria, but it's, uh, it's a fruity drink with wine, the same. But that is the one, Tinto Verano. That is the main drink. And don't uh, think that you automatically got a tip as well. It's not like America where you've got a tip, tip everywhere you go. If you really think you get a good service in Spain in one of these restaurants, it's up to yourself whether you want a tip, but they do not expect a tip at all. So it's not a tipping culture. Also, when you do go around these back streets that are a bit off the tourist spots, remember, not gonna be speaking fluent English very uh, broken so it is really good to learn a bit of Spanish if you do come to Spain because you need to learn the basics how to order food and drink and actually know what you're actually ordering because uh, even though Spanish is taught in the schools over in Spain but a lot of these older generations they, they don't understand hardly any English at all so if you're off the beaten track and you're looking for a decent meal down the back streets always get menu of the day and uh, see what great value you get a lot lot cheaper cooked a lot fresh a lot more time paid. and when you do go to the restaurants remember they don't like you going there with your shirt off it's not like you're on the beach where you can take your shirt off if you're in one of these spanish cities and you're walking around with your shirt off you can get fined it's actually illegal to walk around with your shirt off so make sure you go to one of these restaurants you've got a shirt on or a top on at least so we just walked right the way around and uh, we're just going to check out this famous slaughterhouse museum, archaeological museum. And they're supposed to be absolutely superb inside, so we're going to check it out. If you fancy a decent meal, like I say, you'll know when you're in a tourist box, when you've got a big board outside with people trying to drag you in to eat in their restaurants. When you actually go down in the back streets, of, off the beaten track, and you are in a real Spanish areas, you don't get all that. You'll get a fresh cooked meal. But, uh, talk about uh, muggings and other muggers. You also got them uh, pickpockets out in Spain as well. You've got them in most cities. So you've always got the uh, wits about you. The women are always told to make sure they put their handbag around the front of their body. So they've got it gripped to them at all times. Also, they're also uh, with the men. Their wallets and they're in their front pocket don't have anything behind because pickpocket especially in the markets is ripe out here and uh, talk about markets we've got a little installed market here on our best loss hey the spanish is getting better <laughs> and it's only week of course so a lot of flowers have been sold got a lot of flags out a lot of these museums you go to and on Sundays you'll find all the tourist museums are free in Spain to encourage you to go so that's another good incentive to get out and about and visit these places so yeah inside this little uh, market here you can get your fresh meat and fish very clean for an indoor market I must say this is the other side which is all your fruit and veg so, you've got so we're going to head towards this uh, museum I was telling you about, the Archaeological Slaughterhouse Museum. And it's supposed to be really good, so we're going to check that out for you. And there won't find many English people here either. Probably why you snatch a good bargain on a Spanish house is because they're not getting bought up. Another mistake a lot of people make as well when they're out in Spain and they're jumping in taxis. 
They're getting ripped off left, right and centre. The taxi driver taking around the houses. He knows you're a foreigner. You don't know, know what the price is. And uh, they will just basically charge what they like. They've got little settings. They tap in whatever settings they want. And uh, the main thing is order a taxi and you want to go and visit anywhere, restaurants or get about, you need to check out the price before you get to the taxi and ask them before you jump in, can you tell me how much it is for so and so? And then you can check with another taxi company what they want to charge and then you'll know exactly what you're expected to pay. If you don't ask the price before you get in, you're in a lot of trouble. Must be a really great place this slaughterhouse. It was uh, built in 1929 and it's uh, built into little museums inside so you can see all what went on back in time. Yeah, a bit of everything in there apparently, a bit of um, the history of the old coins and the glassware and the ceramics. So we're going to check it all out. So you've got the hemp there as well that was made in there which is a lot part of the town's history apparently, this hemp which they relied on. And we're just passing another magnificent uh, church, the Victoria, absolutely superb. We can't have a look inside because it's not open. We've even got a little uh, stage outside. You can have a little peek through the peephole if you have want. a look through the peephole. Another tip for Spain as well. If you're actually uh, out here on holiday or you live out here, you can actually get a Spanish pass. You can buy it off the driver, one of these buses and it costs 22 euros for one of these special passes for 22 euros you get this card and the card really gives you 20 euro credit like an oyster card in the uk actually but what it actually does instead of using the 20 euros up when you travel you get a much discounted rate so instead of you paying out for every trip one euro fifty two euros i mean local trips is 60 cents and i think on a longer trip Instead of paying the full price, you get it a lot, lot cheaper. Ah, and then we found this uh, archaeological museum, the culture. Very uh, somber here as well. There we go, and we've got some flags outside that one as well. So we're going to check out, see if we can have a look inside this uh, archaeological museum and see, uh, other words known as a slaughterhouse, and see what it's all about. So this is uh, Plaza Reina Sofia. Okay, let's see if we can go and check it out. So even though we found this uh, famous place, I think maybe because it's Holy Week, but this is another reason why you should check it all out online. It's not open to Monday. Antonio Belesta and Ruiz. It's uh, also an information centre there as well in the Plaza Reina Sofia. You can go and check out the Archaeological Museum. But we've got another place here we can uh, check out of, uh, of interest. Oh yeah, we'll have a quick look at this culture place. bit like a theatre as you can see all chairs so that was the passion culture center and uh, not a lot of happening at the moment but I think they're building up for some kind of exhibition and the people are gathering but yeah nothing to get excited about so we've actually found the place anyway we can no plaza so we're just going to carry on exploring and we've also got the big local club police station just there and it does look brand spanking new. Seem a bit crazy, I know. You get these new buildings banging with the old rustic old buildings. But yeah, that's Spain for you. Yep, they do like a bit of mix, mix and match. Down there. We're going to go and visit the famous St. Rocky Church, which is right at the very top. We have magnificent views. And we're going to go through some dodgy old streets as well. So let's go. Well, we've met a few locals here and they're going to take us to this famous church. Yay! Hey. So, me here, a little fan club here, going to take us to St. Rocky Church. Well, one Hello. more photo for the video. Hello. Muchas gracias, amigos. So, yeah, we're going to go through all the winery little uh, alleyways. And uh, some of the houses did look a bit run down. And we met their young children. And they uh, direct us straight to St. Rocky. So, we're almost there. And I'll tell you what, certainly keep your fit getting up here. 
We've not quite reached the top yet, we're almost there, but as you can see, we're just getting to the top and we've got fantastic views of where we've just come through all the little alleyways. There's a church just over there we visited in St. Victoria, um, Dolores apparently. And uh, as you can go around here, you can see all these houses. They're very poor. They've not got a lot of money in this town. This is the, the old part in the alleyways, very picturesque. But as you can see, just over the back there, we've got the modern and new houses being built. But there's a very expensive villa just over the back there as well. You've got this fantastic mountain. And we are right at the top now. And we've finally made it to St. Roque. Absolutely beautiful. And like I said, before you do visit places, you want to check online because that was the biggest mistake I made the day I come on Holy Week and all the churches and museums are closed. But still, we get to show you the landmarks and uh, they've even got a little peep hole, the same as the other one, just in this centre, okay? And you can have a little peep through the hole. Yeah, they leave a little hole here for you to have a look through. They've got a little donation box there as well. But yeah, we're at the right at the very top now, overlooking everything go right way around and check out the whole area and you can have a glimpse from the front and the back and this uh, can be seen for miles carry on exploring and we've got this magnificent uh, castle as well with the castle Kawaiuisa and uh, this one uh, has been here a long while, the castle, and it sits right at the top. And it was built in 1579 to 1796, so it is the main heritage of this uh, little town. And it's supposed to be spectacular views as well, so we're going to have a nip up there and see what we can see. Down this little alleyway here as well, you've got the chemist and a few shops, and you've got a lovely cake shop as well. Look at them. Little beauties, eh? Yeah. Nice little uh, cake shop. So being Holy Week and today's Friday, a lot of places have actually got their little fiestas going in all these towns. So it's quite buzzing. We're all getting excited. The flags are out, all waiting for the action. This is a funny old uh, shoe shop, 30% discount for all of them, but looks like they've all just been chucked in the window. So they're out for some shoes, you've got all sorts going on here, look, wedding, bridesmaids, the full works. So we're heading away now from the main uh, tourist bits where the churches are, and the main square, and we're going back. We've got a few bars in these uh, streets and residential area, and uh, another little tip as well, a lot of people don't do this, if you actually got a property in Spain, a lot of the mistakes they make, they do not turn the electric or water off before they go home. And uh, there's been many, many cases and I mean many cases of uh, leaks because out here the pipe works unlike any other country like in UK and that uh, they're just like rubber tubes and they wear very thin and you'll have many many pinholes up here and you could have 50 pinholes in a meter long bit of tubing and by the time you get your water bill you end up with a water bill over a thousand pounds and that's happened to a lot of cases because it's so old the pipe work and it's not durable they've improved it now it's a lot thicker than it was years ago so the new lot scanning in is a lot better but for a lot of these older places you do get untold leaks and uh, there was an occasion where someone actually had a leak in an apartment upstairs and they had a high water bill but not only that the leak went right through to the electrics blew all the electrics so they had a big electric bill water damage and they've done damage to the property underneath. And a lot of these insurance companies don't cough up. So you've got to make sure you cut your water off before you go back to the UK if you're standing one of these little holiday homes. Oh, look at this beautiful house here, look at that, the apartments. Lovely, eh? To say, you've got old and new here, you've got the old side and you've got the new side, all mix, mix and match. You probably see over there you've got the oranges on the trees i did mention it before a lot of the spanish towns have all these oranges on the tree and it was all to do with the sewage years ago where it used to chuck a big smell pongy smell and it stunk horrendous they planted all these fruit fruit uh, trees here that give off a nice uh, citrus smell 
and it makes it smell nice but of course things have come a long way since then and uh, all the underground sewage and all that's been proper repaired now but you do find that they've got these uh, oranges and lemons growing on these trees but the oranges I've been told they're not very nice so I wouldn't even try and attempt to try and have them they would virtually just they are just just cover the smell and in this old Spanish town we've got a right modern railway station like I mentioned the Renfri right here so you can get here by train and we've even got a train here now so Coyoisa de Segura Renfri station is just here and I did mention before that they've just started actually from the other day you can get some uh, reduced tickets I think seven euros to nine euros you could travel anywhere in uh, Spain, Barcelona, Madrid, all over with one of these special tickets they're doing at the moment so you need to check that out online you can see a nice little modern railway station and the train's here waiting for you there we go so that was the uh, modern railway station the Renfrey and uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Alicante and Spain's coming so popular lately. It's been voted as the second year running the best airport in Europe. That's Alicante Airport. Of course, another mistake everyone makes when they come out to Spain automatically think they can just pop down a shop on a, being a Sunday. All the shops on a Sunday, the big supermarkets close. And uh, certain times of year that is, and that's normally off peak to give the little shops a chance so they shut the big supermarkets Mercadona is always shut on a Sunday but the others uh, Carrefour and the Lidl's and the Aldi's you might get the odd one that are open but there'll be a certain time where they'll all be closed on a Sunday and it's all to give the little ones a chance so don't think you're gonna wait to Sunday and go shopping like you do when you're back home so just before we're gonna go and visit this magnificent uh, castle Coyoisa we're going to try and make our way to the uh, Fiesta Museum. It's more likely going to be closed today because it's Holy Week and uh, a lot of these museums are closed. So I haven't picked a very good day, but we will go make our way there and show you this Fiesta Museum and uh, have a look and see what it's all about. All these museum and churches in this little area of Coyoisa, it's very easy walking distance. It's like five minutes walk from each church plaza museum so you can have a good walk around there are bars and restaurants you can sit meanwhile new alley disco pub right up in the corner just there you've got the uh, medical center for the emergencies and everything so if you do need to come up to the medical center it's right next to the fiesta museum which we ah, so it looks like we found it and it did say that it's not sure whether it'll be open today because of fiestas and the only week right next to Barquino so if you ask where Barquino is you're going to actually find out where this uh, super duper museum Samana Centre there it is like most of these places all closed today which is a shame really because I could have had a look inside and give you a glimpse what it's all about so we arrived just at a foot at a famous Castillo's. So we're gonna check it out. Well, it doesn't look very pretty around here, that's for sure. Yeah, trying to head towards this famous castle, and it looks like we're going through some kind of shanty town. It certainly don't look pretty along here, that's for sure. I won't come down here at night. So the sat nav stops here and uh, followed it on foot and uh, yeah some kind of shanty town got some uh, chickens here as well on the go okay yeah we've got the castle and uh, it's right up there and I don't think I'll be walking to the top so we've walked through a shanty town looks a bit dodgy so yeah a bit dangerous around here as you can see a state of these houses so that'll be another tip as well when you buy an house remember not always to pay for the asking price because you can actually knock them right down by 10 20 30 000, depending on the price you can always go in with cheeky offers 
and also remember as well the asking price you're going to be paying about 12 percent on top with your solicitor fees and your taxes and also you have to put down a deposit when you buy an house in spain and if anyone pulls out they will lose a deposit so if you're selling a house and someone's buying it and they pull out they will lose a deposit money and you get to keep it vice versa if you buy a house and you pull out you would end up losing your deposit so make sure you're 100 certain that you pick the right house in the right location always advised to have a couple of weeks in the area in a hotel get a feel for the area check there ain't no barking dogs nearby and uh, check the bars and restaurants are a walking distance because you can pick the perfect house and you could end up walking miles to the local bar and then you don't want to be drinking and driving in spain because the limit is a lot lower than it is in the uk that was the castle just at the top and there was no way we were going to venture up there so we've had a little taste of this area Cuyuesa de Segura and you've got some nice areas which was the main town we've just gone round a corner through this area where the castle is supposed to be anyway right at the top of the mountain and you can see a completely different area altogether and there is one last tip a mistake a lot of people make in Spain when they're buying a house and it's a big mistake you'll come out here 80, 100 degrees Fahrenheit burning sweating your socks off but you'll find inside your house is absolutely freezing designed to be cool because of the hot climate but come the winter their houses are absolutely freezing they're not insulated so if you're planning to live out here and it's not an holiday home and you'll be coming not out here all year round you can buy a little house that's not in the sun but if you're living highly recommend you make sure you buy on a sunny side of the road south facing otherwise you'd be freezing your little knackers off anyway let me know in a video if i missed out any mistakes any tips people need to know when they come to spain and you can check my next video out just up here which is the perfect ideal location if you just want to be on top of an airport absolutely cheap as chips here as well so check that link out and don't forget to subscribe and you'll be notified every video i do and if you like the video give us a like and remember to buy me a coffee it'll help me towards all these trips out all the petrol and all the expenses